welcome to Ruchu Study 101. My name is Professor Malim, or Merlin for short. In this course, I will teach you the basics of the Ruchu language. Today, our lesson will cover the following topics, phonology and syntax, the writing system, and guided practice. However, a quick disclaimer before we begin. I am not an expert in linguistics. I may make mistakes with proper linguistic terminology in the duration of this course. However, if you would like to give feedback or offer criticism, please feel free to do so but I only ask that you do so constructively. Thank you. That being said, let's begin. Lin Sun Zin Ra. The phonological inventory of Ruchu has changed since the last conlang video on this channel. As of this current video, there are 17 consonants and 6 vowels, half of which are long vowels. The full inventory is displayed here. In addition, here is the romanization for Ruchu. When transcribing Ruchu using the Latin alphabet, most of the letters remain the same with the exception of these, displayed on the right. Feel free to pause the video if you need to look at either of these charts. Now for syntax. Word order is denoted by a tripartite system. What does this mean? Well, having a tripartite system means that subjects and objects are denoted via ergative, accusative, and or intransitive markers. Let's start with subjects. Subjects of sentences are labeled using either the ergative marker ya or the intransitive marker you. Ergative markers are used if the subject is paired with an object. An example of this is the sentence, I eat the thing. Here, the ergative marker ya is used with the first person singular subject pa, meaning I. This is because the subject acts upon the sentence's object kun, meaning thing. Intransitive markers are used if the subject acts alone without an object. An example of this is the sentence, I eat. Here, the intransitive marker you is used instead, since the subject does not act upon an object. Now, let's move on to objects. Objects of sentences are labeled using the accusative marker, yan. Accusative markers are used for a sentence's direct object. An example of this is the sentence, I eat the thing. Here, kun, meaning thing, is labeled with the accusative marker, because it is the object of the sentence. In addition, note that the subject of the sentence is marked with the ergative, as opposed to the intransitive. Because of the use of such markers, Ruchu does not have a strict word order when it comes to placing subjects and objects in sentences, just remember to mark them appropriately. Now, let's move on to the writing system. Ruchu uses a logographic writing system. This means that each character is its own noun or grammatical component. As of this video, there are approximately 500 base characters in Ruchu, which combine to create compound words. Overall, there are nearly 2,000 nouns in the Ruchu language, but you do not necessarily need to know all of them to be conversational. Ruchu can be written horizontally, from left to right, or vertically, from top to bottom. There is a correct way to write out each separate character, but that is merely to produce proper penmanship. Now, let's practice what we've learned so far. In this exercise, I will show you some example sentences with blank spaces for certain characters. Selecting from the three markers we've learned, ergative, accusative, and intransitive, please fill in the blank with the appropriate one. I encourage you to pause the video as each sentence appears. When you are ready to go over the answer for each sentence, please unpause the video. Ready? Let's begin. Sentence 1 This is the answer. Sentence 2 this is the answer. Sentence 3. This is the answer. Sentence 4. This is the answer. Sentence 5. This is the answer. This concludes our practice. Hopefully you got at least some of them. If not, that's okay. Just keep practicing and you'll get the hang of it. Now let's review. In this lesson, we learned about phonology and syntax in regards to the language's sound inventory and the use of markers to denote subjects and objects of sentences. In addition, we learned about the writing system in regards to how the orthography is oriented and structured. Join us next time as we delve deeper into Ruchu grammar and learn about tense and aspect. Until next time.